Some sad news for the hedge fund industry this week. Julian Robertson, former head of Tiger Management and arguably the most influential hedge fund manager since Alfred Winslow Jones himself, passed away aged 90. Although I never met him, I have met many of his so-called Tiger Cubs, and I can say to a person, they are all excellent, well-prepared, offered insightful analysis, and tended to do quite well running equity, long short equity books and businesses, which form the bedrock of the overall hedge fund industry in terms of assets and people. When allocators emphasize the importance of a manager's pedigree, Tiger is the reason they do so. For over 20 years, the people who learned their craft from Julian spread out, raised their own capital, and continued to dominate flows and performance tables long after his retirement. There are some key characteristics of managers with Tiger DNA that I wanted to share with you and that I try to look for when selecting hedge fund managers even now. This is a legacy of Julian Robertson. Number one, before you play the game, understand the playing field. Tiger Cubs are better geographers of the competitive landscape they operate within. They think in terms of whole systems. Number two, sports is more than a metaphor, it's a way of life. It's no coincidence that many Tiger Cubs are former athletes typically playing team sports. They have the ethos of not always trying to get ahead, but rather striving not to let down the side because they know they're only as good as their weakest player. Three, be the smartest person on a given topic. Tiger Cubs are inveterate networkers. They pull the buy side and sell side continually, testing their thesis against peers and competitors. If they don't have a unique insight, they are cautious. If they do, they're aggressive. Number four, measure so you can manage and continually improve. I remember visiting a Tiger Cub in 2005, which had built their own trade attribution analytics before solutions like Novus existed. They were deeply curious and had no hangups about interrogating their own decision making at every level. Number five. number five, earnings move stocks. Tiger Cubs aren't interested in Benjamin Graham's margin of safety, but neither are they tape readers like Stevie Cohen. They occupy the space in between and dominate in forecasting six to 18 month forward earnings momentum. Number six, build your book to be anti-fragile. This one has been the hardest for the t Cubs to live up to given Julian himself had to shutter his as markets were irrational longer than he could manage in 2000. And Tiger Global went the other way and let the VC siren song lure them away from their historically hedged approach in 2022. This was the subject of a prior video, link in the description below. But for every Tiger Global, there's a Viking or Lone Pine which evolve and change in a more prudent manner while compounding investors capital at high rates of return. Cut the size of your shorts, let winners run if nothing changes, cut losers that invalidate your thesis, rinse, repeat. I, I say, say all this as a tribute to Julian Robertson, but also as a warning to the current hedge fund industry, in which headcount is increasingly employed within so-called pod shop, which pass through expenses and treat their alpha generators like human batteries in the matrix, readily expendable and exchangeable. Where will the industry be when all these investors burn out after being passed around all the pod shops? What legacy will they leave behind? A few mansions for Ken Griffin and Izzy Englander? Perhaps the highest praise you can give a business person is that they left the world and their industry a better, more engaging, more excellent place than how they found it. Thanks to Julian Robertson's tireless leadership and mentorship, that's what we should give him, the highest praise. If you liked this episode, please let me know. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications of future episodes.